This is Jane and her partner Rob. Jane's cognitive abilities started to decline in 2014 and by 2018 she was having hallucinations and started to think Rob was an imposter. She was 57. By early 2019 it got to the point where I just had to pack and all work all together and then just be Jane's carer. But obviously at that point there was no sort of income, there was no benefits, there was no diagnosis. Without a diagnosis of dementia, we weren't able to access the support from Angela or the Admiral Nursing Team up until the day Jane was admitted to hospital. It got to the point that she thought then that I was nasty Rob, who killed nice Rob, thought that somebody tried to take her house away from her. And it just progressively got worse and worse. So it was in January 2000 and yeah, January 2020. And it was on that admission to hospital that actually three days later, the diagnosis of dementia is made by the consultant. It was difficult for there to be a diagnosis in the first place because it, it's, it's rare. Um, and I've since found out that Jane had what is and has been the youngest person that the hospitals had living with a dementia. Once that diagnosis was made, that's then when I first got to meet Angela. But it was just, just fantastic because it was it was like a big weight off our shoulders. And then that opened up access to other means of support, care plans and everything else. And from what I could see, it was a real sort of joint effort from, from with the Pathfinder team and Angela and myself and the family all working together during that four-week stay. I went down to see the um, dementia cafe. People with a dementia, the, the carers can come in and sit and chat and just have a coffee and do jigsaw puzzles and things like that. To meet other people and to be supported by Dion and have some type of reassurance that, yes, it's not just me or our family. It, it sort of, again, it, it, it took the pressure off, really. It's just being able to find the skills and the um, skills, patience, knowledge, to support and care for somebody to the best of your ability. But you do need that sort of support as well. And that's what we've got from Angela. Three weeks later, the psychosis kicked in. It got worse. And she was reinstated, readmitted back to hospital again. But obviously at that point, we didn't realise then that the hospitals were under instructions from the government and the NHS that anybody who had deemed as medically fit had to go home to leave the beds empty. We couldn't cope anymore. So at that point during that stay, we had to make that, well, the toughest decision we've ever had to make in our life. And it was, it was like a death for me because I knew at that point then, this is it, with COVID, no one knew what was going, how long it was going to last for. From March the 25th until the end of August, four half hour visits. So I swore once in July and four times in August. Um, and all you were allowed was a half an hour. So that was that was tough, really tough. And you could see the rapid deterioration. I actually said to the boys, I said, I don't know where we're going to do this, but I've seen one today. And I don't think she's got long with us. So who did I speak to? Angela. Who supported me? Angela and Dion. Phone call September the 2nd seven o'clock in the morning, you need to come into hospital, but Jane's been admitted. Dion answered, she said, it's okay, Rob, we know Jane's in there already. And I, I was stunned. We know Jane's in A&E. Oh, we'll be down to see you. As soon as Angela comes in, she won't come to the office, she'll come into A&E. Well, the words fail me, really, with the support that we had from her. The doctors pulled us together and we knew what we was going to say. She was in a room full of her family and full of things which she loved and liked. When I came back in, and I didn't realise what the boys had told me, and Jane looked like Jane, and it was Dion who just cleaned her up. She made her look, she just made Jane look like Jane from years and years ago. They brushed her hair, they cleaned her teeth. They just made her look like a, a, a happy, at peace human being who was going to die at peace. And that, that just meant so much to us as a family. And then three o'clock that day, she, she passed away. But it was, the, again, it was Angela, Dion, the, t the team on, that, on the Alexandra Ward. You, it, we were in there for, I don't know, 
possibly five, six hours. But it's like we've known them for five or six months. 